Welcome to Password State video tutorials. In this demonstration, I'll show you how you can configure your backups so you can use them in the event of a disaster. The Password State Backup feature will take a copy of your installation files along with a copy of your SQL database. With these two pieces of information, you can use them to restore your environment to a working state. To begin configuring the backups, we need to go into Administration, Backups and Upgrades, and then click Settings. On this screen, there's a few things we'll need to enter to ensure that the backups work correctly. You'll need to create an Active Directory user account that will be used to perform the backups and the in-place upgrades. I've already created one called Password State Backup, and this domain account is simply a member of domain users. I'll now go ahead and enter that account into this field here and I'll then check that the password matches by clicking this icon here. Next we have to create a file share and grant the password state backup account permissions to write to this directory. I've created one already on a separate server to where my password state install is located. So I've created a folder under C drive data backups I've then shared this folder out and I've given permission to my password state backup account to have full control to this share. I've also applied permissions at a folder level for my password state backup account to give them full control at this level. We'll now copy that network share into the backup path field down here. We'll also enable a scheduled backup which will allow us to choose how many backups we'd like to keep and at what time of the day these backups should be performed. We'll also enable the in-place upgrades backup option as this will automatically take a backup prior to you doing any upgrade. The last two things you need to do need to be configured on your password state web server and the password state database server. Luckily for me, I've got both of those located on the one server which I'm currently remoted into. The first thing you'll need to confirm is that your password state backup account has permissions to start and stop this password state service. We do this primarily by adding that password state backup account to the administrators group on the local web server. There are other options to this if you don't want to give your account full permissions to the server and if you need to cut back on the permissions please look at our security administrators manual for how to configure this. The next thing we need to do is because we're going to get password state to take a backup of our SQL database as well, we need to launch the SQL Server Configuration Manager on our database server and launch the SQL, uh, the SQL Server service. This service needs to be configured with an account that also has right permissions to your backup share. So as I'm using password state backup for everything in this backup process, I've configured it for the SQL Server uh, service as well. We'll then just, once we've configured that with the correct password, we'll click Restart and OK. Now, if you already have a third-party system taking care of your SQL backups, you can exclude it from the password state process if you like. That will mean that you don't actually have to configure this step here where you need to uh, set the password state backup account on the SQL service. So you also what you can do is then exclude the database backup from this process. So next all we should have to do is uh, click test permissions and that should give us a successful result. That tells us that everything's ready to go and we click save and we can then click backup now. That will now start a manual backup process and which can take up to a couple of minutes and what it's doing here is stopping the password state web service compressing the installation files, copying them across to the backup directory, uh, restarting the password state service. It then automatically performs a backup of your password state SQL database and it will also copy it across to that network share that you've already created. So depending on the size of your database, uh, this process can take up to a couple of minutes. I'll just fast forward to the end of this process and come back when this is finished. Okay, so now that the backup has completely finished, that should redirect us to another page and we'll see some auditing data there saying that the backup is successful. 
and just to confirm that it's all worked we can have a look in the network share that I've created I've already browsed to the backups share that I've created and we can see a zip file in here which is a compressed version of the installation files along with a .back file which is a copy of the database. Once again if you have any issues with the backup settings please go to the security administrators manual on the help menu and have a look for some more troubleshooting steps in there. I hope this has helped and thanks very much for watching.